All right. What is up, people? My name is Serge Vilmar, and you are watching the Gospel Proclamation Podcast. This is the, the very, very first episode, and I'm so excited for all that is going to happen, not only in this episode, but all the podcasts that are um, to come in the future. A little bit of, I guess, introduction to kind of who I am, what gospel proclamation is, and kind of the goal the goal for gospel proclamation. So um, I am Serge Vilmar, <laughs> and uh, I wanted to start this organization, Gospel Proclamation, and this podcast, the Gospel Proclamation Podcast, to bring honor and glory to the name that is above all names, Jesus Christ. Um, I, this, this podcast, I'm, I'm so excited about it and just, well, really just starting a YouTube channel in, in general, just, just starting to produce content, uh, and for, for you, the listener focused, uh, really I have a, a, a focus for sharing the gospel and then for providing you, the listener with understanding of what the gospel re- actually is and then um just biblical principles biblical teachings biblical sound, sound biblical doctrine for you in your walk with Christ um and yeah so <sighs> there's a lot that I that I have on on my mind and a lot of things that I have planned and a lot of things that led up to this moment of of me starting this podcast um, but a little bit of kind of what what led up to this podcast. Um, for a long time, I've been in, and I guess my my four years. I'm kind of not fresh out of high school, but you know, it's been it's been a whole semester out of high school, so that's pretty interesting. Um, being on the kind of like the flip side of high school now is just so weird. Hashtag no graduation. But anyways, <laughs> the last four years of of my life were intensely dedicated towards the arts um specifically media arts uh and then um the art of music so those those have been i've I've been wow it's it's crazy just to think of how much time how many hours actually spent into doing the into my craft but anyways um all of that now finally um being coming coming to a point where I've always wanted to create have have a a social media presence create a social media presence for God for the gospel for for the glory of God um so this is it um and it's so nice to kind of finally be here and uh after a lot of years of years of years of of preparing um not really knowing that I was going to be doing this but the but all these things God lining things up for this podcast and for just the YouTube channel and for gospel proclamation. It's been something that I'm truly grateful for and to see how God was putting all these pieces in play in their places long before I even knew that I would be appreciative of, of a lot more appreciative of what he was doing in those times. So this is gospel proclamation for you um this is an organization that i've I've always had the vision of of starting an organization um that specifically kind of i guess if you're familiar with that with you know podcasts or um organizations like one of them was like desiring god um by john piper uh, that is, that was one of the, one, a, a podcast that, um, I kind of want, I, I just, I'd never, that was like the first really podcast that I w- had ever listened to. Um, and just the idea of producing content, YouTube content for Christ was something that was 
I, I don't want to say alien, but it but it was alien. It, it was something that I just didn't really think w- w- was something that could be done. Um, I, I don't know why. That's weird. But here I am. Uh, I that is weird that I'm thinking that. But um, I guess I get I guess it just it just hadn't occurred to me that thought that thought that you could use YouTube. And that I could use my art, the art, the talents that I had learned and gained that God had given to me, um, that I could actually use those to honor, bring honor, um, and glorify his name. Um, but yeah, so that was, that was something that was like a pivotal, a a very pivotal kind of shift in my mindset, I want to say. Uh, so that kind of led me to to want to start to create content um, and produce resources, biblical sound, biblical resources, and for you, the listener, um, for your walk and for your growth um, in Christ Jesus. So, I'll get into um, the scripture that I I kind of want the the focus of this organization to be on. Um, and this is uh, out of 1 Corinthians, um, in the second chapter, verses 1 through 5. Um, and, and this is a, a passage common, commonly used um, to kind of, I guess, to express or, or to talk about preaching, um, which I thought was very interesting. But I, I, I remember just earlier in, this, in the year, I was reading through, reading through the whole New Testament. And I remember this, and it just stuck out to me, just just what it had talked about. And um, the Apostle Paul who wrote this letter, um, what, what some of the things that kind of stuck out to me in it. Uh, so this is the second chapter of 1 Corinthians, verses 1 through 5. And I, when I came to you, brothers, did not come proclaiming to you the testimony of God with lofty speech or wisdom, for I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling. And my speech and my message were not in plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, so that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. So in verse two, um, Paul says, "I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified." So his focus is 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 Christ in Him crucified. We'll talk a little bit more about Him crucified, the importance of of Him crucified, um, sharing the testimony of God, uh, and so then going down um, all the way to just well, not all the way, but uh, to verse. Four and then into verse five, um, it was not it was not the wisdom of of Paul, the plausible speech of Paul of Paul that was that was to be the uh, the the thing to be looked at the thing to be um, ad, admired or or, uh, or or lifted up, but it was the demonstration of the Spirit and of power um, of the the power of the Spirit. Um, that was that was being shown um, the demonstration of the spirit in Paul um, so that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. So our, so our faith is not rested in Paul's wisdom. It's not rested in, in my wisdom. It is rested in the power of God. Uh, so our wisdom is in the power of God. So when in, in this my goal in sharing the word with you and producing this, this podcast for, for you, um, and, and really for God, uh, this being something that's pleasing and honorable to God for your education, um, and, and for your spiritual growth, um, that is the, the focus is not to be lofty and, 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 with words and and trying to be showing wisdom of of my of my own wisdom but demonstrating the power of the spirit and the power of God the wisdom of God um to you 
so that it may be a sign to you of, of, of the power of God, that the word of God would, would, would live and be active in your life. Um, that is that is my goal for you. That is my prayer for you is that you listening to this podcast would grow in faith um, and faith in God. So that's that's really behind the whole organi- organization. That's that's really the, the, the focus scripture for this um, organization, proclaiming Christ and him crucified. Uh, and so looking more at, at this testimony of God and, and just the gospel, talking about the gospel. Um, I wanted to start out this first podcast, and this is where we'll kind of start getting into into the topic of, um, of today. Um, but the, the gospel, why did I want to start out this podcast or, or just any content that I that, that I wanted to make? Why did I start it out with, with the gospel? Um, well, actually, let me, let me, let me turn here and I'll, and I'll, uh, this is first Corinthians 15. Um, so yeah, so, so this is the, this for, for Christianity, the gospel is the why, uh, and, and, and for, for me, the gospel is the why behind this podcast in any content that I um, intend to produce um, on, on this, on this, uh, for this organization. All right, so um, this is Paul in same letter of Corinthians, but later on, um, but Paul talking about the resurrection of Christ. And give me one second while I look for it. Okay, so um, Paul in the in the in the first part of first Corinthians 15 there um, from verse 1 to verse 11 he's talking about um, the resurrection of Christ um, and and kind of if you if you're new to just Christianity in general maybe you've never heard of maybe the gospel um, is 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 new to you um, but Christ Jesus um, was was God incarnate um, and he came to earth, God among us, Emmanuel, God with us, uh, lived a life of, of a sinless, perfect life, died on the cross as a payment for the sin and the and for the for the lack of righteousness in man to fulfill our righteousness and reconcile us, bring us back to God um, and give us relationship with God. Um, because the sin is what separated us, sin being our disobedience um, to who, to God, and to what his His standard, his law. Um, we have broken his law. We have transgressed, we have transgressed against him. And so we were dead in sin, but Christ has made us alive um, through his death on the cross. So, and then three days later, doing what no other prophet did, rose from the grave. Yeah, any other prophet, they're chilling in the grave, but Christ is raised. Christ is living. Okay, so that's that's the, the that's the resurrection of Christ. Um, and then we'll kind of have a verse, a, a section of scripture that kind of show show that a little bit more in scripture. Um, but Paul says this. Uh, and and starting in verse twelve, and then I'll uh, I'll kind of just kind of stop when I think I reach the point where I've done. But anyways, <laughs> but now if Christ is proclaimed, and this is verse twelve, now if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how come some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain and our and your faith is in vain. We are even found to be misinterpreting God because we testified that God that about God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise, if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, even Christ 
not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. And then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If, if in Christ we have hope in this life only, we are all people to be most pitied. Going on, verse 20. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has also come the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so all also in Christ shall all be made alive, but each in his own order. Christ the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Whew. Wow. That was a lot. But um Paul literally says and and he says if if Christ has not been raised, then our faith is is meaningless. It is futile. It is vain. It is vain. The resurrection of Christ from the dead and and the the gospel, the message that Christ has come to save sinners from their sin and reconcile us back to God and to give us forgiveness of our sins and fulfill the righteousness that we ourselves cannot fulfill. This is the central this is this is central to Christianity. You 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 don't have Christianity without the gospel. You do not have Christianity without the gospel. This and, and Paul says this if if Christ has not been raised, then your faith is vain. And we and he even says we are misinterpreting God and then we are most people to be pitied. Um so uh, it's just it's like wow, you know, it's just this is this is what Christianity is is, is centered on is the gospel, um, and and if if anybody or if, if you are somebody who um, maybe you're in your circle of influence in your church your whatever it may be, if this is not the cent- the center of everything you are doing, then then it is it is not Christianity, um, and you you are not in a you are not in a biblical church. Um, because this is the center of everything that we are um, doing. Um, another passage by Paul, um, another book by Paul, or the letter, the letter of Ephesians the, 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 to the church in Ephesus. Um, and I, I really love, this is one of my favorite passages of scripture. Um, but it's Ephesians 2, chapter verse 1 through 10. And Paul says this, and you were dead in your trespasses and sins in which you once to walk, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of our body and the mind, and were by nature children other under wrath children of wrath like the rest of mankind so what does paul say so before we go to verse four that is that was verse one through three um but this is this is what paul says about about our about our nature um is that we is that we were dead in trespasses and sins and um, we were following the course of this world the prince of the air um and and this and the spirit that is it now at work in the sons of disobedience um and among whom we all once lived so this is so this is we were we all um once lived among the, this is this is who we lived among and in the world a lot of people still live amongst them today um this is this is the world this is a description of of those who have not been saved. This is our nature. Um, and, and by nature, at the end of verse 3, by nature we are children 
under wrath like the rest of mankind. So this is, and if you can pick up on the wording that Paul is using here, you can see there he's talking to a specific group of people. Um, and so the, the group of people that he's talking to is born again believers. And we'll see that as we read the rest verses four through 10. But God being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses and sins, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised up with, with him and seated us with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not your own doing, it is a gift of God, not a result of works, so that no man can boast, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. There's a word there. A lot of people cringe or don't like when they hear this word. Um, and this is in verse three. Should have read this, mentioned this before, but it's actually kind of good that I didn't. Um, but wrath, children of wrath. We, we, it was wrath of who? Um, it, it is God's wrath that we were under. Um, the understanding is that God's wrath was upon us, his, his anger um, was upon us because of our sin, because of our fallen sinful nature. Um, this is our, our nature was sin. Our nature was, was we were dead in sin. That, that, that meaning of, of the use of the word dead um, in scripture, um, and you can see this all the way back in the book of Genesis, is, is a separation from God. So we were separated from God in sin. Uh, and so uh, being, being dead and separated from God and sin, Christ has been that, that payment for our sins, the fulfillment of righteousness so that we may be reconciled as Paul uses in Romans five, the word reconciled that we've been brought back to God, um, that we now are able to be to to be in relationship with God. We are no longer we are no longer separated from God by our sins, but through Christ we have been made alive and we have been reconciled back to God. Um, this is this is a uh, if you do not understand our sinful nature relative to God's holiness and his just judgment against sin and pay, the payment for sin being death being what what we deserve for our disobedience to God is death is spiritual separation from him but because of his great love for us he has he is not willing that any shall perish so he gave his son Christ Jesus so to die on the cross so that we may be made alive in him. Wow, that is such a glorious, glorious thing. Um, and uh, just going back, back here um, to Ephesians and, and just going back down. Um, it's, it's by grace that we have been saved uh, through faith. And this is something not of our own doing. It is a gift from God. Uh, so we, we've we've been saved. We have been saved. If 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 you do not understand what you've been saved from, you can't understand the gospel. Um, that w- what we have been saved from is our sin, is our trespasses, uh, and 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 God's wrath towards us, um, and our sinful fallen nature. This is very very important to understand understanding the gospel. Um. So yeah, so. Before pre-Christ, pre-resurrection, pre-salvation, we were dead. We were separated from God, um, but have been made alive through Christ. 
this is important because Christ, through Christ, we have reconciliation and we have the ability, we have now the opportunity to get back to God. And I know I've said that over and over and over again, but it is, it is so important to reiterate, um, to keep on reiterating, 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 because it is the hope that lies within us um, that that Peter talks about um, in chapter 3, verse 5, the, the, the hope that lies within us that we must be able to give a defense of. How can we truly say that we love God if we don't understand the basic why behind any of it? And Paul says this in, 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 in uh, 1 Corinthians 15, that if Christ has not been raised, then our faith is vain. The gospel is the center. Is usually, usually a lot of um, in in the culture, a lot of people will usually look at you know the gospel. You got you got you start out with the gospel as like the baby level, but then you you know you grow out of that. No, the gospel is at the center of everything we do, and you you cannot. The gospel is a non negotiable um, doctrine. It is non negotiable central truth to Christianity. You don't have Christianity without it, and that is an important thing to understand. Um, and and the gospel is is the message of hope um, to you. It is it is God's love. God has shown His love to us that while we were still dead in our sins, dead in our trespasses, He gave His Son that we may be brought back, that we may be reconciled back to Him and be in relationship with Him. Where the righteousness of man, of sinful man lacked, Christ fulfilled that righteousness so that this may be possible. Without this understanding, without the gospel, you can't have Christianity. And the, the singularity in the, in, in the gospel and the singularity, the singularity in Christ is that only through Christ um, is, is it that we have this forgiveness of sins. Um, in John fourteen six, uh, Christ says, "I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me." Christ is the only way to the Father. Christ is the only way to that reconciliation. This, I reiterate, I, I, I reiterate, I reiterate this a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, um, because I want you to get this. I want you to understand that. This is the the hope. This is hope. This is this is love. This is peace. This is joy. This is the message of all those things come together to us from God. The creator of the universe has given us, sent us his son um, so that we may be in relationship with him. As I conclude... Um, I really, I'm excited about this podcast. Um, I'm excited about all that God is going to do. Um, I do admit I, I, I spoke and I quoted a lot of, I, I said a lot of scripture without actually quoting it. That is one thing that I, I want to make sure that I do in the future. And I'm sorry for that, but quoting the, quoting the scripture so that y'all can, go and and look for these places in yourself and and also one thing that i really want y'all to do is that while you're listening to this podcast be following along reading the scripture at the same time that i'm i'm going to it pull it up at the same time the bible version that i use is the esv bible Uh, i love my crossway esv um but yeah this is (laughs) i'm excited about this um as we go along it'll clean up a bit um but but God is going to be honored. God is going to be glorified in this. And it's my prayer that um, you will you will be praying um, for, for this podcast. And it's my prayer for you that you will benefit greatly from this podcast. Thank you all so much for watching or for listening. <laughs> Got to get that right. <laughs> but thank you so much for listening, guys. Love y'all. And I hope to see y'all again soon. Bye-bye.